Hi guys. Happy Wednesday. So we have, um, which I find this really funny. We have riveting with Rita today. So today we're going to walk through crystal rivets. Um, I'm going to show you how to put a crystal rivet on a bracelet and how to cold connect two pieces of metal together. So I am coming to you from my home studio. So riveting, I laugh every time I read this. So riveting with Rita, crystal rivets are a jewelry maker's secret weapon. Okay, we are going to... I'm gonna show you how to put two, use two applications today. One on a bracelet, um, and I'm, I kind of troubleshooted that for you guys this morning. Um, I was just gonna do just a cold connection, but I think crystal rivet on a bracelet is where it's at, and um, I'd rather show you how to do it here instead of you purchasing them and getting home, and then you're like, oh no, what do I do next? The Crystal Rivets Carly are not a new product. We've had the Crystal Rivets for many years. It kind of just sat on there. Um, and a lot of you have been asking how to use these Crystal Rivets. So I'm bringing them back. We are working with, if you just joined, we are going to do a quick two demos on the Crystal Rivet and setting kit. Okay, so now guys, this pad is the same as the pad that's underneath my block. So crystal rivets, and then you could find them. They come in all different colors. We have them on the site. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna bring you over to my block. We're, the font that we're using today, I feel like maybe swaying away a little bit from the signature sets. I am going to use our four millimeter set called Sailor. Sailor is a um, more of like a vintage tattoo font. I'm also going to show you how to use your bracelet sticker guides with a four millimeter font. So without further ado, I'm going to take you over to my bench. And so I haven't used Sailor in a live. So we are going to do that today. Okay. And the hammer that I'm going to be using with my rivets is going to be my multi-function hammer, okay, with my chasing head. That's what I'm gonna be using. So I went ahead and I just stamped some components um, to show you guys. So like I said before, the rivets come in little packs of five, just like that. So this is the April, uh, April Birthstone, which is a diamond. Don't we all love diamonds? Okay, so what I did was just to really quick walk through of how to connect two pieces, I basically just stamped a bottom disc that says love, okay? Poked my hole through it. So now with this hole, guys, you're not gonna use a small hole punch. You need the bigger of the two. And then I punched also a brass plate just like that. Do you like that? Carol B. I wanted to put Carol Baskin on there, but I figured I just, I just do the whole Carol B. That was it. Watching too much TV lately. So you want to line them up. You want to make sure that they are sitting correctly. So basically what I did first is I took my disc, I put my love in it, and then I put my disc, my gold, my, my brass disc on top of it. Okay, I measured, I lined it up how I wanted it to sit, and I just put a dot in my brass disc. I punched my brass, my hole in my brass disc, then put my disc on top of my alchemy, and with a marker, I put a dot in the center where I wanted the hole for my bottom plate. Okay, so... What I did next, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your steel block away. And I have a pat, my foot stuck on there, but I'm gonna leave that just like that, okay? You're going to take your crystal rivet, okay? We are going to put that right through the first hole, okay? Just like that, so it's hanging out the back. 
Then I'm going to place it right inside of my second disc with my hole. So now this is cold connection. This is being able to connect two metals with a rivet, not having to use any glue, okay? Um, I know we have a question that once they're connected, can you throw them in the tumbler? Um, I wouldn't throw stones in the tumbler. What's gonna happen is if you throw these in the tumbler and the beads, those stainless steel shot run over that, you're gonna get a really dull looking crystal. So, cause you could see that this is faceted. So remember, never put faceted stones like this in a tumbler. So, especially if you don't know um, if they're semi-precious, if they're glass, if they're plastic. So you wanna try to stay away from that. They are not real semi-precious crystals. They are glass. Okay, they are made in the Czech Republic, so they're Czech glass. So any of my bead ladies out there, um, my bead creatives, know that the best glass comes from the Czech Republic. Okay, so it's definitely not, um, it's definitely not plastic. All right, so then you're going to take your back, that cap, and you're going to place it right over that bottom piece, okay? Then you're gonna be very careful with these crystal rivets for the simple fact that if you hit them too hard, if you hit them with your brass or your steel heavy hammer, your crystal is going to crack, okay? And I've done that before. So you definitely don't wanna make that mistake, okay? So I am going to take my disc, I'm gonna center it, I'm gonna put it over, on my rubber block. I am going to then take my punch, okay? Now the side of the punch that you're gonna use is the side that has that dome in the center. You don't wanna use this end. You wanna use that dome in the center to place that down right on top of your rivet, okay? Not the glass side, the metal side. Then you're going to, let me pull this back a little bit for you guys so you could see. Then you're gonna take your hammer and give it a couple of nice taps, okay? And that is going to secure your rivet onto your blanks and it's gonna sandwich those two together. So that, my friends, is a cold connection, okay? And it's nice, it's in there, it's not gonna move, your disc is not gonna move around, and then you would just put your jump ring on there and put it on your chain. Yes, Brandy, it works on the aluminum cuffs too. So I'm gonna go through how to do a cuff now because um, it gets a little bit tricky, okay? So let's do this step by step. I am, like I said before, I'm gonna work with my Sailor four millimeter set. And Sailor is basically a unicase set. It um, doesn't have a lowercase, but it does have numbers. Okay, guys, so this is a sample that I made earlier today. Let me see if I could zoom in on that. Okay, so it says spread love and we're gonna recreate it. I do suggest using these crystal rivets on the in the center or the top part of your bracelet you cannot use them to go around because you you get into um a little bit of a pickle when you go to bend your bracelet so i'm going to show you how to work around that okay so what we're going to do is i'm going to pull out my bracelet blank, I'm using a copper bracelet blank and I always make sure that my blank, my uh, steel block in front of me is in a diamond pattern. So a diamond shape right in front of me so it's easier, I have more surface to stamp on with my bracelets. Okay, this is the four millimeter font. I'm gonna pop off my top. Ugh. Okay, so um, we've had, could you put it on the ends? You know what? 
Carly, I don't know. I'm pretty sure you can, but we'll, we'll try to troubleshoot that, okay? So when I talk to you about spacing and how to line your stickers up, this is a four millimeter font. When I went through the stickers, I said that one blue line that runs directly across your bracelet sticker guide is for your quarter inch bracelet, okay? The second hash mark, see that right down there? That is for your half inch, okay? Now, and the third one is for your five eighths, but that's only if you're, that's only if you are using a three millimeter font. So I got, me and Jen got a, a message about four millimeter font, what's your spacing on the half inch disc? So this is my suggestion to you guys, okay? Your half inch mark for your three millimeter is your second hash mark. See that right there? If you're using a four millimeter font, I would not put it on that second hash line. I would find a happy space between the blue that runs across and the between that other hash mark. So you want that sweet spot. Let me see if I could mark that for you guys. That sweet spot is basically right between your blue for your quarter inch bracelet and your blue for your half inch bracelet, okay? If we were doing just a three millimeter font with a half inch, we would utilize this blue line, this little blue hash line on each side of it. But since we're doing a four millimeter font, you wanna find a sweet spot between the quarter inch space line and the half inch line. All right, so here we go. So I am going to pull out my S. Okay, remember the impressor should always face you when you're stamping. You're gonna bring this down, lightly drag it, feel that restriction in, in the ledge of that tape, that sticker. Okay, so guys, because it's a four millimeter font and it's wide, I like to tilt and tap. And the reason why I, why I like to tilt and tap is because it leaves a nice and even impression. Sometimes when the, when the font is bigger and it's wide and you only hit it once, you get half of an impression if you're not really flat. So I like to tilt and tap just to be safe. And there is my S and you could see that I have a really nice, clean, even impression. Let's move forward to the P. I'm gonna bring it down, line my letter up. Guys, remember when you're lining up, you're not lining up any random part. You wanna come in right in the middle, okay? Put that cap back on. So let's see if I could turn this down a little bit. So I'm bringing this down and see how I'm lining my black line up to my black hash line? You want to make sure that you're flat, your lines up, and I'm just tilting and tapping it just to get all of that letter in there. The bracelet blank that I'm using is the half inch. Oh, it's the three eighths. Okay, you're gonna bring that down. So there's my R and my E. My A. Now guys, you see how wide that is? That's why I'm utilizing the black hash marks, okay? Those little hash lines that you see, the orange and the black, I'm using the black. It kind of, your, your stamp fits right between the two orange. Okay, like I said, this is a very wide font. Flat, drag it down, feel that tape. Just 
gonna flip this up a little bit. So you see guys, you see how nice that is? And it's got these little tiny lines through the font. And I tilt and I tap it just to get all of that. Let's see if I could get that. There we go. Just to get that nice and even impression and fluid letters, okay? I'm gonna come in with my L. I'm gonna bring this down. And then, oh, I really, I have to tell you, I, I love this font. I love this font. Um, and not because I'm a lover of tattoos, but I just, I love it. You know, it could go really for anything. It's not a feminine font. It's not a masculine font. It's just so universal and it's great. You know, you could also use it to mix fonts. I love to mix fonts. Love, love, love to mix fonts. It's my V. Flat down, lightly drag that. So if you're having problem with a font, guys, that you can't get, you can't get like all of that impression, definitely try to tilt and tap it. Look how beautiful that looks. I love, love, love this font. See, every time I use it, I fall in love with it all over again. So, and this is good for Father's Day too, if you're making um, some things. No, it is, Maureen, it's not a, it's not a signature font. This is just our one of our regular, okay? Same thing, brass, copper, aluminum, uh, 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold, gold, fine silver, sterling silver. Precious metal clay, wood, leather, if you're careful, okay? And it is a four millimeter font. So after I've stamped my bracelet, we're gonna take that off. You see now how we're right smack in the middle of this 3 8 bracelet? So you definitely, guys, when you're using your sticker guides, find that sweet spot right in the center of the, uh, whew, the four, uh, oh God, I can't even think the, of, of uh, the measurements today. The quarter inch and the 3 8. So that sweet spot with a four millimeter font would be literally right in the center of those two lines, okay? And I think Jen and I will work on a little graph for you guys, um, a little guide sheet to um, explain that a little bit more. So, now, what you're going to do is, when you put your rivet in and you go to bend your bracelet, you have all sorts of problems, okay? So you're going to... First things first, you're going to take your, and it's a little, we're doing things a little bit backwards. All right, so I'm going to pull this up so I could show you guys. You're going to come in where your rivet is with your pliers first, okay? You're going to come in following the curvature of your bracelet, and you're going to, where your hole is for your rivet, and you are going to squeeze. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same thing on either side of that. Okay. So you're going to place your crystal rivet right in the center there, okay? Hold it with your thumb. You're gonna come back. You're gonna put your cap on that. And you feel it, it clicks a little. Just because it clicks, guys, doesn't mean that you're good because this is gonna fall out. You definitely need to smash that rivet. When you bend it on the bar first, Christina, you kind of, when you curve it, you're, it just makes it harder for um, you to put your punch in the center. This gives you more room to work, okay? 
So I am going to take it just like that. I'm going to turn it. Then I'm going to take my, let me pull you back a little bit. And I'm going to give that a couple of hits. Okay, I'm going to check that I didn't crack the crystal because I have a very heavy hand. I'm going to bring it back down. Put my punch. Give it a couple of more hits. And I just want to make sure that that crystal, that cap in the back, is flat. Okay, and it's kind of giving me a hard time because I've got the camera in front of me. So there we go. All right, so there is your crystal rivet, okay? I could use to hit it a couple of more times, all right? I'm going to take, let's see, Carly asked for silver today, so silver she gets. Remember, girls, when you are using your crystal rivets, do not hit them on your steel block, okay? So you're going to cover your impressions. Now, you could do this before, you could do this after. Your enamel, it's completely up to you, okay? So I'm using just a regular household paper towel, guys. Nothing fancy. Um, Christina, you're hitting it on the rubber mat, okay? Do not hit it on wood or the steel block. And I'm just gonna lightly remove that enamel. I'm gonna come back in with another coat. I left my marker out without the cap on it. Don't do that, but here it goes. It's so easy with these to get them back. Um, yes, Christina, it's in the kit. There we go. It does, Maureen, it's one of my favorites. It really is. And if it's too light for you guys, you could always put your black enamel first and then let it dry and then put a coat of your silver on top and it turns it like um, a graphite color. All right, let's see if I could get that into focus today. And I'm gonna lightly wipe it. All right, so here we go. I love, love, yes, Camille, isn't it pretty? Don't you love that look? I love, um, I just love it. I love the uh, the silver on the copper. Um, let's see, just Angela, would the green pen show up better if I do it in black first? I wouldn't mix the black and the green, Angela. What I would do, the green is supposed to be, guys, this is not supposed, it's supposed to be more of um, like a patina. Let's see if I have, you know what, we'll use this. This is the green. What you want to do, Angela, with that green is I would really be, let it dry, wipe it, and then I would put another coat. Okay, and that, that's the green, which is more of like a antique blue. So guys, I don't know if you could see it. That's just one coat, but if you do multiple coats, it does get much darker. 
You know, it's a light marker to begin with. And there's that blue. You could see that it depends on what metal that you're using. Let's see if I could get it into focus. There we go. Um, it shows up really great on the aluminum or the alchemy, anything at silver tone. Um, but you could definitely use a couple to a couple of coats on the brass. So now I'm going to continue with my bracelet. So I have it bent. Okay. I'm going to take my, of course, my bracelet bending bar. So I'm going to start at one side and I'm going to bend that over and then the same on the other. Okay. And I'm going to come back in with my pliers. And instead of starting from the center, I'm going to start from my ends and work my way in. Okay. Same thing. Now, you definitely want your crystal rivet. Like I said, guys, it's hard for me to be a little bit aggressive because I have the camera um, in front of me. But you want your rivet. See how it's flat up against that disc, okay? You definitely want it flat up against that disc. So you don't want a space in between your rivet. I have a little bit of a space. It's just making it a little bit difficult with the camera in front of me to do that. But then, you know, I like oval, so I bring it out a little bit more, okay? Let's see if we could, let me try again to get that in. See. If you bend, if you go all around it, it just makes it a little weird. It leaves less space in between. So I always like to do that first. There we go. All right. So you just want to make sure that it's definitely in there. So that is your rivet. Any questions? Maureen, is that question? Um, this is the one that I made. Let's see. You know, Maureen, you can't really um you can't really feel the difference, I don't think. So my thing is um with the crystal rivets on the sides, I literally get caught on everything. So if I'm gonna do a rivet, I would do a rivet either in the center or I would do a rivet on each side. I really wouldn't mess around with the ends, especially, you know what, um, Carly, I know you were talking about, um, I'm not sure if it was Carly or Noel, but putting a rivet on the end, I just feel that, you know, it's not so flush. They do stick up. Um, I mean, you could do it. I personally don't because I get caught on everything. I am one of those people that gets caught on everything. So this is the difference between the black and the silver enamel. How great is that, guys? Right? How do you do two rev uh, rivets without the bracelet creasing when bending? So Paige, you're gonna use, you're gonna come back in. In the beginning of this live, I showed how to um, use your bracelet bending plier. Um, before you, you know, before you do anything, you're gonna you you're gonna punch your hole, stamp your thing, stamp your design, use your bracelet bending plier, okay. Put your rivet in, then you're gonna use your bar. Kimberly, that's hope is a good mantra, especially especially nowadays. So they do look good together, don't they, Maureen? And yes, Jen, I know I make it look so easy, but I've been doing this for a very long time. And I tell you ladies all the time and gentlemen, just learn your tools. You know, that's what makes you a craftsman. You have to learn your tools. Once you learn your tools, you could stamp anything. How long I've been stamping, Gail? So I went to school um, for sculpture, industrial design, and jewelry. I am a bench jeweler. Um, I started stamping in, I want to say 90, 96, when no one was really stamping. I was one of the first ladies on Etsy. 
So I've been at this for a long time. Yeah, Katie, I'm a, I'm a big black and silver. You know what? I want to show you guys the brown. Let's, um, let me grab a bracelet, a copper bracelet, and not knock over my phone. Oh, okay. And I'll just show you guys really quick because I know we finished that up. We finished that demo up fast today. And I'm just gonna, since we're talking enamels, guys, now I'm, I'm doing this bracelet, but I'm not lining anything up, okay? So I'm just gonna let you know. I'm just eyeballing it. So if it comes out not centered or I'm just showing you what the enamel pen looks like. So we're gonna do a spread love again. So let's see. Um, what? Let's do just different. I'm just gonna put love on there really quick. So I could show you with the chocolate brown looks like. Okay, let's see. So if you're beginning, I'm just reading back comments really quick. Um, I think that stamping on a, your alum, aluminum is great to practice on. I think that getting a pack of aluminum bracelets, maybe the 5 8 bracelets, and just, just continuing your stamping, A through Z, A through Z. Once you're, you get the hang of your set, you're not gonna need sticker guides anymore, okay? So this is the chocolate brown, okay? You're just going to, like the other enamels, you're just gonna go over it. Take your paper towel, blot it, lightly wipe. I'm going to pull out my buffing block. You're gonna take your buffing block and give it some love <laughs> with it. Run it back and forth. See how nice and shiny that gets? Because I know my, my bracelet was hanging out up there on my wall for a while, so it kind of oxidized. But you could, with the brown, if you like light brown, light brown's good. But if you want it more of a dark, you want to let it dry for a little bit and not rush and wipe it off like I just did. And there is the chocolate brown. Okay. So here you have it. The black, the chocolate brown. The chocolate brown looks really nice um, with mandala patterns. It's much softer than the black. I know you really can't see that, but the brown is really nice. All right. And let's do a blue just so you could see the blue since I went off. Let's see. And I'll show you the blue in the copper. Yes, Kimberly, it's definitely like a sepia color. Here is the blue. So we're just going to let these dry. Just lightly wipe it. So that is the blue. You can see it better there. All right. I keep on saying blue. You're right, Christine. Thank you for correcting me. It's a green. I don't know. Maybe I'm colorblind. To me, it looks like an old vintage rusty car. That blue, but it's green. It's a green patina marker. 
I think it looks blue, but it's green. Um, when do you move? Okay, so Lucy, um, we talked about tilting and tapping. I like to tilt and tap. See, guys, the more um, layers you put on there, the, the greener, blue greener it gets, okay? See that? Um, I like to tilt and tap my four millimeter stamps. If I'm using a script font, um, that's a four millimeter or um, it's really detailed and loopy, I like to also tilt and tap that. So we had a question. This is, this font is Stargazer, ah, Stargazer. <laughs> Sailor, it's a four millimeter font. So I'm just going to go over descending letters, guys. So I'm going to put my sailor away. Okay, so descenders. This is typewriter lowercase, okay? So this is signature. It's rated for stainless. Um, so I'm just going to stamp. I'm going to stamp apple just because I need a snack. Who doesn't need a snack? I snack more since I'm home than I've ever did before. Okay, so here's my A. Now, obviously, my P is a descender, right? So, I am going to make sure that my descending letters, my P's, my J, my... God, my J's, my G's, my Y's. I'm not going to pull them down, guys. What I'm going to do is, hold on a second. Okay. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to place my stamp. Let me see if I could find a marker just so I could show you guys. See that blue line that runs across your sticker, you're going to place, so here's my A, right? I'm doing P, P, L, E. I'm going to place the bottom curve of my stamp right here. I'm gonna make sure that I place that in between my black and my orange hash mark, and I'm gonna make sure that my bottom of my stamp I'm going to make sure that that stamp is sitting on that line, okay? So instead of dragging my descending letters, I'm placing my descending letters, all right? So I'm going to place that, and I think I just moved it. I did move it, so I'm going to do my next P. All right, and you're going to stamp over your over your sticker. See guys, I mess up too. <laughs> We're gonna try that again. All right, let's do our A. There we go, that's much better. Now I'm too high. There we go. Third time's a charm. So you're going to make sure that the bottom hits that blue line, okay? Just like that. That's how you do your descenders. All right? You're going to make sure that your bottom of your stamp is right on that blue line. So don't drag it down. Place it. Um, do you pull them down if they're all capitals or just lowercase? No, Jen, you just pull them down if they you pull them down if they're all regular letters that aren't descending. So if you're using uppercase, you don't have to, you pull the, you pull all of those down. All your uppercase gets pulled down. 
the only thing that you're placing on your sticker, the only letters that you're placing on your stickers are your descending letters. So that is your Y, your P, your Q, your J, your G. Okay? So only these letters. Okay? Anything that is, well, as my daughter says, Mom, she just corrected me. Anything that has a basement. So... Your basement letters, you're going to place on in between your hash marks on the blue line. Everything else, guys, you're going to drag. Definitely going to drag. This is what we use today, guys. It's a crystal rivet setting kit, okay? It's got a crystal rivet rivet tool, and it's got that block. Um, so you definitely want to purchase this and the crystals come in packs of five. They are, um, check. So they are really pretty glass, glass crystals. With that being said, thank you very much for joining Jen and I today. We appreciate you. Keep those submissions coming in. Definitely hashtag us at Stamp It Forward and impress us. And impress us. Um, let us know if you're interested in that little side hustle group. Um, talk business, uh, how to praise things, how to start out, um, how to utilize social media to sell your product. So definitely let us know. Um, and we hope to see you guys here on Friday for a Friday new release. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good day.